Hi everyone, I'm Sally. I'm a DPhil student in the Health Economics Research Group uh, at the University of Oxford. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about how, um, or issues in measuring the outcomes from genome sequencing for rare disease diagnosis. So health economics is a tool that can be used when deciding whether a new test or treatment should be translated into routine healthcare. Health economics contributes to this decision by evaluating whether the benefits of a new intervention are greater than its costs. An example of this is the decisions that NICE makes about what tests and treatments should be made available through the NHS. Health economists traditionally measure the benefits or the outcomes of a new intervention by determining its impact on patient survival and health-related quality of life. This is often expressed in the form of quality adjusted life years or qualies for short, which is a composite measure of morbidity and mortality over time. Health related quality of life is commonly measured using patient reported outcome measures, also known as PROMs. These are validated measures that are distributed to patients via surveys and are typically measured, uh, be, sorry, typically administered before and after the introduction of a new test or treatment to determine the magnitude and direction of the intervention's impact on health related quality of life. So why are health economists interested in measuring the outcomes from genome sequencing for rare disease diagnosis? Well, as I'm sure you know, rare diseases are conditions that are individually rare, but that affect approximately 6% of the population. And some examples of rare diseases include Angelman syndrome and Prader-Willi syndrome. However, despite the relatively large collective prevalence of rare diseases, obtaining a rare disease diagnosis can take several years, and approximately half of all people with a rare disease remain undiagnosed. This process is commonly referred to as the diagnostic odyssey. As a result of this, people living with an undiagnosed rare disease face barriers to accessing clinical trials, treatments, and other clinical management strategies, if available. This means that rare diseases are responsible for a disproportionately large global burden of disease. And this burden is borne by patients, families, health systems, and societies. However, genome sequencing is changing this paradigm by improving the likelihood that a person with a rare disease will obtain a diagnosis and increasing the speed with which this diagnosis may be made. This is because genome sequencing vastly outperforms existing screening and diagnostic technologies due to its ability to analyse most of the genes in a person's genome simultaneously and relatively quickly. Now that all sounds very good, but why is genome sequencing special? How is it different to other screening and diagnostic technologies? And why is its application in rare disease diagnosis so important? Genome sequencing is vastly different to other screening and diagnostic technologies due to the familial nature of the information uncovered, combined with the vast number and categories of results that may be identified. These include whether the results pertain to diagnoses, incidental findings, carrier status or pharmacogenomics, their level of pathogenicity, whether they're medically actionable, and their mode of inheritance. In addition to this, genome sequencing data is a rich resource that can be drawn upon at multiple points throughout a person's lifetime, whether this be to answer questions related to the original reason for undergoing sequencing or an unrelated matter. And this is very different to a simple diagnostic test, which can tell you whether or not you have a disease at a certain moment in time. Now, when considering the use of genome sequencing for rare disease diagnosis specifically, the literature shows that this can produce a range of positive and negative outcomes among patients and carers that span clinical, emotional, cognitive, behavioural and social domains. And in particular, the value of knowing has been highlighted as a construct that is highly valued. However, even when diagnosed, many rare diseases have no available treatment options which means that traditional health economics outcomes such as survival and health-related quality of life may be difficult or less relevant to assess when evaluating genome sequencing for rare disease diagnosis. So to recap, we know that genome sequencing is different to other screening and diagnostic technologies and that the outcomes from using genome sequencing for rare disease diagnosis go beyond those typically measured by health economics outcome measures. But why does this matter? This matters because it has led health economists to question whether the way we measure outcomes is fit for purpose, and in particular, whether the validated health economics outcome measures we use can measure the full set of outcomes from genome sequencing. 
as well as whether they're sufficiently sensitive to changes in these outcomes pre and post test. This refers to the psychometric properties of content validity and responsiveness. So this poses a problem for health economists and decision makers alike. If the health economic outcome measures we use aren't capable of measuring the full set of outcomes from genome sequencing, we're at risk of comparing all of the costs associated with this technology against only a partial picture of the benefits. This is important because health economic outcome measures are frequently used by decision makers within the UK and internationally in the context of clinical trials and large cohort studies. And oftentimes decision makers will have preferred outcome measures. For example, NICE in the UK prefers the use of the EQ5D measure and requires that assessments of new interventions use this for its consideration. So this means that these health economic outcome measures can have a significant impact on funding decisions and therefore the efficiency with which healthcare budgets are spent in countries such as the UK, Canada and Australia, which have organisations or processes similar to NICE and which use these health economic outcome measures to inform their decision making. This is important because if the full impact of genome sequencing for rare disease diagnosis is not considered in funding decisions, this technology could be underutilised, which could create inefficiencies associated with delayed diagnosis and the resulted diagnostic odyssey, or it could be overutilised, which could result in unnecessary tests to confirm spurious findings or reduce anxiety. If these inefficiencies were to occur, they would reduce the funds available to cover other health system costs which would neg negatively impact other patients. And this is known as the concept of opportunity cost. So this is particularly relevant in the UK, where given the increasing use of genome sequencing within both research and clinical domains, as shown by the establishment of the Genomic Medicine Service to the support the 100,000 Genomes Project, as well as the Generation Study, and including broader cohort studies, which include um, genome sequencing components, such as the Our Future Health Program and the UK Biobank. Thank you.